micro house plants in glass vases without drainage holes. And apparently it works. I get a lot of comments from people who watch my videos and say that my vase method, my no drainage method, the thing that I feature in my videos when it comes to plant care has really helped with their collection. It seems to work not just for me, but for a lot of you guys as well. I want to make a video where I take you on a little mini tour and highlight some of the plants that I have growing in glass vases, some of the different substrates that I have, pros and cons, you know, some of the good examples, some of the struggles, you know what I'm saying? It's not all sunshine and rain all the time. So I started out with semi-hydroponics because I had a huge fungus gnat outbreak and I saw a lot of people were using LECA which is these little brown clay balls and you have a reservoir of water at the bottom and it wicks up through capillary action and it keeps all of the roots evenly hydrated but because it's clay balls and there's little air pockets between the clay balls it's able to provide ample aeration so it's semi hydroponics and while that did work tremendously for a very long time as I got into other types of species particularly anthuriums I realized that it wasn't really cutting it anymore because anthuriums, they don't like that much aeration. They like a little bit more moisture. And I found that the semi-hydroponic systems that I was using, it was drying out too quickly and there was too much airflow around the roots because the roots, they want airflow. They like aeration. They don't want like a condensed soil or a condensed medium, but they, you know, they want moisture. They want perpetual moisture. So then I started experimenting with sphagnum moss because I know a lot of people would grow plants in sphagnum moss. And I was like, oh, what if I just put some LECA on the bottom and that would wick up the water and hydrate the moss? And that worked great. And over the years I modified it, I kind of strayed away from LECA. I find that there's just a little bit too much air in between the clay balls. So I usually do pumice, fluval stratum, really any free draining substrate. You know, a lot of people use pond for anthuriums. People have great success with pond, but I find that the best method for growing aeroids is sphagnum moss with a base that is free draining. So you can use perlite, you can use fluval stratum, you can use pumice, you can, you know, some kind of porous rock that can wick water up. I've also experimented with tree fern. I've experimented with aeroid mixes. I've experimented with, you know, a little bit of aeroid mix, a little bit of sphagnum moss. I have some vases where it's like half fluval stratum and then the top half or top third is sphagnum moss. I try some methods where I will put a layer, like an inch or so of sphagnum moss on top so that I can eye it because sphagnum moss, it lightens in color when it gets dehydrated. And also I can feel it. So when the sphagnum moss on top gets a little bit dehydrated, I then know that top moss is going to dry out first. It's going to dry out the fastest. So I say, okay, it's time to water again. Let me water now. Let me not wait till tomorrow because by tomorrow, the roots underneath that moss in the actual substrate it might be a little bit too dry, then you might get a little bit of dry rot, and then you go to water, and then you get root rot, you get fungus, diseases, and then rot gets into the stem. And by the way, guys, a plant can still grow while it's being attacked by rot in the stem. And it's really bad because you don't know there's a problem until it's too late. I have lost plants because they kept growing new leaves, but I didn't realize oh shoot, the stem was rotting. So that's why it's really important to keep an eye on your roots. That's why I like the vases. That's why I like see-through containers because I like looking at the roots. And last thing I'll say before we get into the actual tour where I show you the plants is that consider your humidity and that should decipher how moisture retentive your substrate should be. Tree fern, it's going to dry out very quickly. Pond, it's going to dry out very quickly because it's very free draining. Sphagnum moss, on the other hand, it's like a sponge. So it soaks up a lot of water and it holds on to water for a very long time while still being aerated. And you know, if you have greenhouse conditions, if you live in Southern Florida where the humidity is really high, you can grow things in very chunky, free draining aeroid mix. I mean, aeroids, they will love that type of substrate. 
if they have high humidity in the air and they have high amounts of water in the air that they can absorb using their foliage. Now, if you live in a climate like me where the humidity is, where's my hygrometer thingamajig? It's usually like 30% in the winter, sometimes 25%. The most humid day is like 40%. That's like when it rains. <laughs> And in the summertime, it's like, you know, between 40 and 50%, you know, no, no, nothing crazy. So when you have lower humidity, you have to compensate by keeping the roots even more hydrated. I have plants that are planted in moss in here where it's 90 to 100% humidity and the sphagnum moss nearly dries out, but it ain't no thing. The plant is just fine because there's so much water in the air that the plant is absorbing through its foliage that the roots can dry out a little bit more in there. Whereas if the roots dried out that much out here, the plant would just go <laughs> It's essentially about compensation. Does that make sense? So think about your environment when you're deciding what type of substrate you wanna use. If you wanna grow things in a terrarium like this, or a greenhouse cabinet or a grow tent, then you can use more free draining substrates and you don't have to water quite as often. You know what, sir, if you're gonna be a failure, then I'm going to put you on display for everyone to see. This is what a failure looks like. Fuck those batteries. I just charged those things. Like last year. Anyway, well, that's a long time, I guess. I don't know, anyway. I'm a one-man show here, guys. I'm a one-man show doing a million things! Not really. I think that's uh, my cue just to get into the video. What was I even talking about? I don't know. Yeah, all right, let's just get into the freaking video. All right, let, let's go, come on. No, come on, Th this way, this way. So we got this guy, oh my God, he is so dark, you can't even see him. He is backlit right now. This is my red spider. I think it's a red spider. I hope it's a red spider. It looks a little bit different from the red spider. You can't even see it, so freaking dark. I'm pretty sure red spider is like an unknown hybrid or something, so like I can't really give you a lot of information on it. It's pupping and offsetting like crazy, so I'll have to divide it pretty soon. It's also, is that a flower or is that a leaf? I th yeah, that's a, that's a flower. Sometimes it's hard to tell when they're small. That's a flower. So, huh, can I self this thing? That'd be interesting. Or cross it with something, that'd be cool. The leaves are very cool. Anyway, guys, I'm probably going to have to repot this anyway because do you see how dark this is? You can't even see. Wait a minute. If I zoom in, it maybe it'll focus in on it better. Do you see how dark that is? That is all algae. Now, I don't know if it's easy to see on camera. It might not be, but there's little white spots. That's mold. Now, the roots look just fine. These are nice thick roots. These are nice thick earthworm chunker roots. So these roots look great. I don't like how the algae is just so freaking dark. And the reason why is because I let it just like sit out in the grow light for too long. Like the, you can't even see, wait a minute. I let it sit out for too long and uh, all the algae grew. So now I am putting it in a container where there's less light so that the algae can not uh, grow as fast. Uh, let me show you another one. There's a root growing there. You can't see it, it's so backlit. So it's all moss, it's fluval stratum on the bottom, and I have fluval stratum because these guys really don't like to dry out at all. They get dry rot very easily in my experience, so I don't wanna try like using Lekka or anything. Fluval stratum, it's very, very small. So less room for little air pockets and things, so. But do you see how there's algae on top and not at the bottom? That's because it's in a decorative pot, like this one. Like that, you see that? So the algae has access to light on top, so it's growing on top, but not at the bottom. Now let me show you this guy here. Let me show you, this right here is my Carla Blackier. Oh boy, um, this is always awkward to take out, and I wanna be very careful because it has a new leaf coming in, I don't wanna screw it up. But this is a decorative pot, and it's great because it prevents algae from growing. Can you see that? The moss is still nice and light. I could have just planted that the other day. But I didn't because look at how those roots are growing in there. Woo! So you know what, probably after this leaf, I'm going to have to repot this because I want the thing to get big. So I need those roots to expand and man spread so that they can support bigger leaves, guys. Bigger leaves is what we want. 
in this household. Do you see how algae is growing on top? Can you kind of see? Yo, algae's growing on top, but not at the bottom because I have it blocked off. The light is blocked off, people. Now let's take a look at the Antilochii, AKA Black Velvet Eastern Panama. I love these pots. The problem is they have that weird like metallic smell. They just smell like ass. I hate it so much. It's got a new leaf coming in that's totally backlit. What if I go over here? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I? Um, there, that's, oh, that's not even, there, there we go. Okay, so yeah, there's the biggest leaf. New leaf coming in. It's flowering, guys, so I'll probably self it and just sell some pure BVEP seedlings for like super cheap just so people can get, get their hands on one. But let me see. Uh, oh, so right here, this video is a mess. I'm trying to show you that th there's a root that like dried out right there. It's really hard to see, guys, I'm sorry. There's like one or two roots that I can see that got a little bit of dry rot. This moss did not dry out, but it got too dry. You know what I'm saying? Like it still felt damp, so it was deceiving. So it got a little bit too dry. A couple of the roots that I could see on the outside got a little bit of dry rot, but it's okay guys. I didn't have to worry about it. I just kept on top of the watering for the next couple of weeks and all of the other roots around it are doing just fine. So as long as the vast majority of the root system is healthy, you probably don't have to worry about anything. By the way, that is the leaf that I got it with. It's still holding on, guys. <laughs> this is a round crossed with Felix. I, it's, it's just two different types of BVEPs crossed together. So like one of them is called a round, one of them somebody named Felix, and they crossed those two B BVEPs together and they made this BVEP. If anyone cares, a BVEP is a VBEP, guys. But I mean, the reason why people are such stinkers about the cross or whatever is because BVEPs, Carlos, like the one that I showed you, and Theriums in general, they're just so diverse depending on the locality, and they can change in appearance and, and have different traits and different genes, so that can change the look of the plant. So when you cross two together, it can create a new, a subtly new look. It's genetically still the same plant. You know, it's still the same species is what I'm about to say. All right, let's take a look at an example that I'm not very proud of. So I've had this for a while and honestly guys, I think I need to put him in a vase because I think he's just drying out too quickly. He's in terracotta. He's been in a Vanda basket for his whole life pretty much. I don't think he's ever been in no drainage, but I feel like he, he just needs, I think the, the vase life because his leaves are kind of getting crispy. They're kind of of drying out. You see that one? You see this one back here? It looks kind of crap. And this guy, he, he has two growth points. He's very big. This is uh, Paladiflorum. Beautiful, beautiful plant when it looks good. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like I just keep putting it off because I just, I have no time. <laughs> yeah, so that that's like not the best example. You see all that guys? You see how it's darker on the, the tips? So these are roots that have died off. Not looking too good. It's putting out a leaf, it has a flower. I really should cut this flower. You know, I'm gonna cut it right now. It's gonna snap it off because it doesn't need this flower right now and it needs to focus on the root. So now it's a pointer, guys. <laughs> I'm going to leave it in here for now. Actually, you know what I'm going to do because this is quite extensive and there's a little bit too much that I think is, I don't know, it's making me uncomfortable. When this leaf hardens off, that one right there. I'm going to up pot this. I'm going to pot this in a bigger vase. Maybe I'll make a video on it to kind of show you guys, but so that'll hopefully fix this dry rot problem. Cause yeah, that's not root rot, it's dry rot. I mean, I guess it's the same thing, but it's not from being too wet, it's from drying out too much. Little, little, little. Let's show you guys a philodendron. Oh. I just dropped my pointer. So, we got sphagnum moss on top and a base of LECA on the, no, not LECA, what is this? This, this? this is not LECA. This is fluval stratum. It's the stuff you put in fish tanks. Now, these patriciaes, this philodendron patriciae, they have very thin roots. And actually, I'm looking in this thing right now, I'm not seeing a whole lot of roots. Now, normally I'd be like, mm, where are the roots? But when you have leaves that are coming out this big, <laughs> I mean, look at this, look at this leaf, guys. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, you can't, look at this, 
Look at this! <laughs> so yes, these guys, they do not want to dry out. They like perpetual moisture, guys. Now there is a little bit of algae growing. There's not a whole lot of light. This moss ball, I don't think it's doing anything. I don't think it's rooting into it, but I don't know. If anything, it provides support. Oh wait, is that? I don't see any roots. Oh, here's another example, guys. So here, why is he like stuck in there? Guys, he's stuck. Why is he stuck? Guys, my Adam Papa once he's stuck. What? What? Guys! <laughs> Come Oh, there we go. Oh my god. Oh, motherfucker. Oh, he's dry. Okay. But like, these guys are tough. Like, this philodendron can dry out. So his roots look pretty much just fine. Honestly, guys, this was a top cut that I just rerooted in Lekka and it was just fine. So yeah, all Lekka and then a little bit of aeroid mix on top. So yeah, there was like water or condensation on the bottom. So that's why it got stuck. It like suction cupped <laughs> to the bottom. Look at those roots! There's my philodendron pink princess. Didn't ever expect to get one of these again. I've had this one for, uh, few months and very very thin roots guys thin thin roots can you see that if it wants to focus does it want to focus does it want to focus there we go yeah it's so dark the roots are red which is kind of cool but like do you see that very very thin roots so this has to stay wet so i have to make sure this does not dry out but he's doing pretty well guys look at that Look at that. This, this can go fuck itself. This leaf, absolutely not. But leaves like this, they can stay. And then this is a great example of a plant that's just in sphagnum moss. Let me just check the roots real quick to make sure I don't eat my words. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, so see these roots here? Big earthworm roots. This is a Clarinervium hybrid. Can you focus please, you moron? This is a Clarinervium hybrid, so it's got those Clarinervium roots. If it wants to focus on... There we go. So you see... <laughs> I like this vase. It's cute, right? It's fancy looking. I got it because it kind of reminded me of Delta Force a little bit. A little bit. A little bit, right? Just a little bit. Like, kind of. You know? Anyway. And maybe the last one I'll show you is... Oh, sorry for the motion sickness, guys. Um, way up there. This bitch, this, this one right here. Warkianum, guys, the Queen Anthurium herself. I used to have some of these. They didn't do that well, I got rid of them. Then I was like, you know what, let me try again and see if I can do my no drainage method with these guys. Now that I've really refined it and perfected it, let me let me try again. And this guy, he's been doing great. I have other ones in the Grow 10 that are just kind of like eh. But this one, I've had the longest and it's doing the best. Growing in ambient humidity, guys. I'm talking like 40 to 30%. Okay. Look. I can't. I don't want to drop it so I can't like bring the, the camera down right now. But look at this. Le what a stupid video this is turning out to be. Look at this. Look at this leaf. It doesn't look that big on camera, but it's like, it's almost two feet long. It's crazy. Well, foot and a half. I've never had these be able to hold on to more than two leaves at a time, so it's holding on to that leaf. Looking pretty good. And this leaf is pretty old. It's still looking not, not, not too bad. Not the best, but for low humidity as a house plant, this guy is not very easy to care for. It's doing pretty well. Now let's look at the roots. This is one of the only ones that I actually do use like a reservoir reservoir. I have it in fluval stratum. It's so black, you can't even see it, I'm sorry. Fluval stratum, a little bit of pumice is in there or like pawn or whatever, one of those. And then I have a little bit of aeroid mix, which is like, like sphagnum moss and a little bit of bark and stuff on top just to kind of keep the top more compact. So that the top dries out roughly the same as the bottom. So the bottom has more moisture, the bottom is sitting in water, the bottom used to have more aeration than the top because the top will dry out faster. Does that make sense? So this guy is doing quite well. I just watered him, which is why his reservoir is so high, but I usually wait till his reservoir is almost at the bottom and then I'll give him like an inch, inch and a half of water. And his roots, they look good. They look good, like, like look at this root. Look at that root right there. You can't even see it. That one right there. Anyway, you get the idea. It's a root, guys, okay? Like, it's, it's not that exciting. But that leaf is exciting. It got a little bit wonky there, but you know what, guys? It's still trying to figure out low humidity, so like, it's okay. It's okay, guys. Plants need to get their shit together, and that's okay. We need to 
be tender and gentle with them. And what am I even saying right now? You know what, Jake? Just end this video while you still can, because it's already been a disaster. I'm just like a head. <laughs> All right. Get out of here. All right, bye.